Blackmagic design enabled B-RAW recording to their video assist monitors from the C300 Mark II and the Panasonic EVA 1 a little while back. I don't have an EVA 1, but did have access to a C300 Mark II. For corporate and commercial projects, we've been contemplating a solid autofocus camera for single crew interview shoots and gimbal work that could also play well with the Ursa G2 color science and dynamic range. In the age of the C300 Mark III and the Sony FX9, the C300 Mark II stands out to me as a far less expensive 10-bit 4K workhorse that offers the one feature our Blackmagic cameras lack, autofocus. But will they play nicely together? Let's take a look. When I'm grading in post, the process I go through really depends on the project, the budget, and time allocated to it. But I'll usually take one of three different paths in color grading. I'm not a dedicated colorist, but I do grade most of my own work. The first is grading utilizing raw adjustments and corrections to ISO, white balance, and tint and then grading primarily in Film Convert Nitrate. The second is again making those B-RAW adjustments, adding a LUT like the buttery LUT or Blackmagic's extended video LUT, then color grading usually after that LUT transform. The third is an all manual grade, B-RAW adjustments and corrections, and then manual adjustments, no LUTs, no Film Convert. Of course, in reality, I, I actually often intermix these processes and occasionally experiment with more stylized LUTs. So what I wanted to do with the C300 Mark II footage recorded to the Blackmagic Video Assist 7 inch is just see how easy it was to bring this footage in line with our Ursa Mini Pro G2 using each process on one node. When we first started having a look at the footage on the same day we shot the tests, I was actually working in Canon Log 2 and Canon Cinema Gamut for the Canon and Gen 4 Color for the Ursa G2. And I wasn't having an easy time of it to be honest. I was struggling. I particularly wasn't happy with how Film Convert was treating the greens on the Canon compared to the Ursa. In their standard Rec. 709 spaces, the Canon generally handles greens far better than the Ursa in Gen 4 with Blackmagic's LUT applied, in my opinion. I updated Resolve to the 16.3 beta to check out Gen 5 color science, and I was immediately reminded of the jump Red took to their current IPP2 color pipeline. I haven't read up too much on Gen 5 yet or tested it. Today was literally the first time I've worked in that space, but I'm assuming this change has been made to offer a larger container, for lack of a better word, so we don't get things like nasty color clipping on bright saturated light sources, like neon signs, car lights, and things like that. I'm sure there's more to it, but that was an obvious improvement to a layman like me when Red moved to IPP2. Anyway, today when I sat down with the benefit of B-RAW, I put both files into Gen 5 color space. I didn't make any base level ISO or white balance adjustments, and it should be said that as of today, they are not currently possible with the C300 Mark II. It is RAW, you can change the color space you're working in, but not ISO, tint, and white balance. I started with the new Ursa G2 buttery LUT, updated for Gen 5 color science, and applied that to the Ursa. I then applied it to a node on the Canon and added another node before that one to make adjustments on to match the shots. I made a still of the Ursa grade and used the image wipe feature to quickly and imperfectly match the shots looking at my grading monitor and the scopes. I wasn't going for perfection with this, just can I get them in the ballpark fast? And I think I can. All it took was very minor curve adjustments and a gamma adjustment towards yellows on the Canon. Not perfect, but for the purposes of this test, these can get really close really quick. Turning off the buttery LUT nodes, I created a Film Convert Nitrate node profiled for the Ursa G2. Gen 4, as a Gen 5 profile update, isn't out yet. So I added more of an S curve inside of Film Convert to compensate for the flatter starting point with Gen 5 color science. I copied that node to the Canon after the same adjustments I'd made before the buttery light node and once again, pretty damn close. The greens now look all right on the Canon with Film Convert, yay. Finally, I did an all manual node, no LUTs, no Film Convert, just adjustments to bring contrast back to the image and punching up the saturation. I copied the same node grade to the Canon and presto, pretty damn close. A quick side note, for some reason there does seem to be a gamma shift 
between the internally recorded 10-bit MXF files on the C300 Mark II and the B-RAW files recorded to the Video Assist when viewing Canon C-Log2. I'm not sure why that is. It's not an issue when moving the Canon footage into Blackmagic Gen 5, but yeah, something's going on here. For me, being able to bring both files into the same Blackmagic color space is huge. Not to mention being able to choose my level of B-RAW compression. In my experience, NLEs can struggle a bit bouncing around between different codecs on a timeline, even if they are technically compatible. Keeping the files in the same format makes for a very fast workflow, especially in Resolve. After almost a year of working extensively with B-RAW footage, I'm still blown away by the speed, quality and flexibility of the files and in my eyes as a G2 and 6K pocket shooter, B-RAW recording on the Blackmagic Video Assist monitors has really made the C300 Mark II a very compelling tool to add to our arsenal. I just don't think you always need the newest and most expensive camera, especially when you can hire them. Every camera doesn't and shouldn't have to do everything. Our Ursa can do 120 frames per second. The C300 Mark II can do really good autofocus for interviews. So I guess finally, if you're an Ursa shooter and you're looking for a 4K 30fps autofocus companion for interviews and on-speed gimbal work, 2015's C300 Mark II is a superb contender that'll be a lot friendlier to your wallet than its younger brother, especially if you buy one used.